Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today, I want to take you on a journey that is probably going to change your life. We are going to have a lot of fun with ComfyUI, and I'm going to show you why it is so capable and such an amazing tool. I want you to imagine ComfyUI as a canvas on which you doodle. Imagine yourself as a kid and you just draw out anything that is in your mind, in your fantasy, because ComfyUI is absolutely adaptable and open. So in this video, in this lesson, we're going to talk about the basic functionality and how to understand it and create in an easy and fun way. Here we have a very simple workflow that is just creating this very nice image here. You can see here there's different elements in here and we have here these lines that are connecting everything together. So we're going to build that together. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how the interface itself works. So let's start fresh here with this element. You can move that around any way you want it on the screen. Here you have several controls in there and there might be something you don't have. This is the manager. And that is very important because here you can install all of the custom nodes, which are these little boxes we have just seen. Now, this is very, very easy to install. You need to go to the GitHub page of the ComfyUI manager, and then you want to scroll down a little bit. And here you see this text line, git clone, and then the web address of the ComfyUI manager. You want to select all of that and copy that. Then you're going to go into your ComfyUI Windows portable folder in there in the ComfyUI folder in there into the custom notes folder. And when you are here, you want to click up here in the address bar and type CMD and hit enter. This is going to open up your command window. And here you simply paste what you copied before. Now that the text is in here, you simply hit enter and wait for it to finish downloading it should only take a couple of seconds. After you've done that, you can close the command window and you're going to click here in the ComfyUI Windows portable folder again on run NVIDIA GPU bat. This is going to start ComfyUI for you and is finishing the installation of the manager. Once you have that and you see this button here, click on that and you will see this. There's a lot of different buttons in here, but they are all easy to understand. There are three buttons that are very important for you. One is the update all button. And over here, you might get a message that your ComfyUI is outdated. So you can click on that and wait for it to finish. This will update ComfyUI and all of the custom nodes that you have installed. The second one that is very important for you is the install custom nodes button here. You can click on that and this is going to open up a list for you. You can see on the right side when you already have installed nodes, you can either disable them or uninstall them. Disabling might be useful when they are conflicting with other custom nodes. And of course, you also have an install button so you can go and install it from here. You don't even have to go to the GitHub page anymore. Now, here are some of the note packs that I want to suggest to you. One is called the ComfyUI Impact Pack. The other one, ComfyUI Inspire Pack. The Efficiency Notes for ComfyUI, the Ultimate SD Upscale, and then also the ComfyUI ComfyRoll Custom Notes, because these have some of the most used custom notes in them. Another thing you might want to do in here is to install models. When you click on that, you will have here a list of models. Now you will realize that these are often not models that you are using for image generation itself. For example, up here, this one, for example, is very good. The 4X Foolhardy Remakery, the 4X Ultra Sharp is also very good. The 8X NMKD Super Scale 150,000G, also very good. And you can actually see on the left side by the type what it is. Now you see here we have upscale, inside face, face restore, we have checkpoints, we have embeddings and so on. Don't be too much concerned about that right now. We don't need all of that at this moment. Before we get started, you might want to do one more thing. You will find the file extra model paths YAML example. Now you want to delete the dot example part at the end. So it's becoming a YAML file and then you can open this up. Personally, I'm using for that the Notepad++ software, but you can use any kind of text editor if you want to. 
Now, if you already have, for example, automatic 11.11 installed, what you want to do is to set the base path to your automatic 11.11 and in there to the web UI folder. And then this will automatically link to these other folders here with the same structure. So that means it loads all of the models that you have from automatic 11.11 without having them as a duplicate on your hard drive. You want to save that and you can close all of that. And then you can click in the menu here on refresh. So it's loading all of the models or alternatively, you can simply restart Comf UI if you want to make sure that everything is loading correctly. Now, where do we find the nodes and where do we create that? Here is one advice I want to give you. You can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel. And when you do so, you will realize there's a very thin blue line around here. Now, this is the starting area of your canvas. So when you start to build, make sure that everything is inside of that blue line. You can go over the blue line, but the core of your workflow should be inside of that blue rectangle here, because next time you load your workflow, it's loading that area of the workflow. Next, of course, we want to add some nodes in here. The easiest way to do this is to double click on the canvas. This is going to give you this search window here. You can see you can scroll through all of the nodes, but even better, you can type up here what you want to have. For example, K sampler. This is for creating the images. Now we want to click on that and you can see this is adding the node for us. So this is super simple. And of course, you need to know the name of the node, but over time, because you in most cases use the same nodes, you will remember the names over time, or you can look them up in other workflows or ask in the Discord communities for ConfUI. So in here, you see, we have some inputs here for the model, positive prompt, negative prompt, the latent image, which is the latent noise or anything you want to input as a latent image. And then we have some settings here like the seed number you want to have here, maybe randomizing the seed, but you can also choose here from these pop down menus, for example, have a fixed seed for every generation, the same seed or increment or decrement. Increment means it goes up one number, decrement means it goes down one number. So you can see in these choices here, we have different kind of data inputs. Here we have a pop down menu, while here, we have a number. These are full numbers with no decimal point. And down here for the CFG, for example, we do have numbers where you can have a decimal point in there. So these are called floats and these are called integer numbers. Then you have a sampler in here. You see it's a long list. There's also a filter here where you can search for what you want to use. And then below that you have a scheduler. Now this is something you don't have in automatic 1111. And this here actually gives you more freedom. First of all, you can see there's more schedulers in here, but then also you can combine them any way you want. So for example, when you go in here and you have, for example, DPM plus plus SDE, there is no Keras version because you select this and then separately you select Keras in here so this gives you more combination, more abilities for experimentation. Below that, we have the denoise that is similar to image to image rendering. So basically, in any step in ComfUI, you can do image to image because you want to be more flexible. You have a lot more ability inside of ComfUI. Now, how about these connection points here? On the left side, you will always have the inputs on the right side you will always have the outputs. When you click and drag, this is turning into one of these noodles or cables and you can let go of them. And this will suggest to you something that might be useful to connect. You can also click here on search to have the search window again if you want to search for something else. Another functionality that you have in here that is often very important is called the reroute. Now this gives you this little element here now, the interesting thing, let's move this over here, is I can, for example, let's create a little bit more reroutes here and pretend that these are other nodes that we are using for other things. Now, let's say I have another K sampler down here. Let's simply copy that down here. And I want to reconnect all of these to the second K sampler instead of the first one. Instead of going through all of them, I can simply go now like this and I've switched everything. 
So that is very useful. But there's also a second important purpose for these reroute nodes. This can give you a lot more clarity in your workflow. So let's say, for example, the cable runs like this and I have a node sitting here like that. So this is going behind the node and it might get very confusing of what's actually happening. So instead, you can use these reroute nodes to have this go around that and by that creating more clarity. Now, there's also another reason for using these reroute nodes, and that is to make your workflow cleaner and easier to understand. So, for example, here you can see we have a lot of cables that go all over the place. This can become very visually cluttered. So instead, we can use this reroute node to put it simply closer to it. And by that, we have only one cable going over here, while the others simply go to the other nodes in a shorter path. And this makes it much easier to understand. Now let's have another look at our starting node here because there's a lot more you can do with that. You can see here on the left side, we only have four different inputs and then all of these choices. But what if you want to have, for example, the seat being controlled from the outside? An example for that could be that you're using multiple case samplers, but you want to use the same seat in each of these case samplers. So for that, what you could do here is right click and then down here you have a selection of convert seat to input. So all of these controls can be converted to input. So when I click on that, you can see that now the seat is gone and I have an input for that. So I can now create a seat node and connect that. And as I said before, here we have now two K samplers that are fed by the same seat. So when this is randomized, it is creating one randomized number that then is going out to both of these case samplers. So both of them always use the same seed number and that can be very helpful. If you no longer need that input, you can always right click again and then set this back. So down here you see convert seed to widget. So when you click on that, this is removing the input and now you have here the setting again inside of the case sampler. There's also more things you can do to customize your note. For example, you can change the title up here. For that, right click, go to title, and then in here you can add something. Now, I would suggest to you to keep the original name and then add something behind that. For example, let's say anime. So this is, for example, the case sampler for the anime style that we want to create so that you know what kind of note it is and also what it is for. This is important so you have clarity over what is happening and why you're using it, especially when you come back to your workflow days or weeks later. Another thing you can do to create more visual clarity is to change the color of your node. So you right click again, you can see here we have color. And with that, for example, I can change this to green. And you could, for example, switch all of your K samplers over to green. So when you look at your workflow, you know exactly where all of the K sampler nodes are. Another thing you can do to stay better organized is to create groups of nodes. For that, you want to right click on the canvas and then select add group. This will give you a colored box. I often put this above my nodes and then you can drag this out over all of the nodes. If you want, you can make it a little bit shorter and then move the nodes inside. Now, this gives you an area that now combines all of them together so you can move them around together. You can also bypass all of them together. So you can right click here and then select bypass group nodes. Everything is going to turn violet. This means it's bypass. It's not being used at the moment. And you can undo that by again right clicking and then select set group nodes to always like this. Now, here's a fair warning. This is a sticky area. So that means if you move this area over any other node, even if you only touch it a little bit, it will become part of the node. So you have to be a little bit careful where you're putting your groups. And if something sticks to it, you can simply move it out of the way and then it's outside of the group again. Also for any individual node, you can also bypass them. You do that by right clicking on the individual node and then select bypass. And if you want to reactivate them, again, right click on the node. And in this case, also select bypass and this will activate them again. This also works for nodes inside of groups. So you can turn off individual nodes inside of a group. Thanks for watching and check out my next lesson.
Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.